Hey race fan, Lee Craft here, the Monday morning racer. I'm outside Gene's Speed Shop. Let me take you inside, see what the old shop looks like. We'll sit down with Gene Cromer and Melvin Craft, the duo of the Moonlighter, next on Monday Morning Racer. In Anderson, South Carolina, behind a fair little hamlet, you've got Gene's Speed Shop, which, back in the proverbial day, was a powerhouse of horses, speed, and torque. It might not look like much today, but just imagine back in the 60s and 70s, in full song, the engines being honed, the torque wrenches clicking, and the occasional drag car doing a burnout just outside from the bay. Jeans Speed Shop.
Monday Morning Racer here in Anderson, South Carolina, Gene's Speed Shop, and we caught up with the man, the myth, and the legend, Gene Cromer himself. Gene, look, tell me, you've got this legendary stat status in the gasser world, and you've been in this game of drag racing and machining for a long time. Where did it come from? How did you get into drag racing and the motor work? Well, I started out just a shop, a machine shop, I mean, and just mechanic shop. And then I started a little drag racing. I started the, the machine shop, building engines, and I started out just valve jobs and, and then balancing and then got to building engines. And then I, start, I built this Willis. First ran it in 1965. And just from there, just kept building up. <laughs> and then when it started running, run what you brung, I ran a wheel of some and run what you brung. Then I built a topless Mustang, injected Mustang, and, and ran it. And this, whatever. <laughs> we, we ran a lot of places. Didn't make no money, didn't have no money. Had to make do with what we had, I'd do without. <laughs> and that's about all, you know. All right, Gene, you are definitely known in the drag racing world for your motor building and running Ford Power, but I'm curious, what else did you work with and where else did your engines wind up being in and any other types of racing in the world of motorsports? Yeah, most of it was round track dirt track. Most everything I worked on was Chevrolet. That's about all I worked on about years ago. That's all you built. And a lot of here in Anderson, in Georgia, and different places in North Carolina. And that just, just, just the engines and doing the machine shop for a lot of guys and a lot of shops. And they'd build their own engine. Now, Gene, you just mentioned that you worked on Chevrolet engines all the time, and it seemed like that's what everybody was running. So why is this Willis, and from what I understand, even the Mustang and the Maverick later on, why were they powered with the F-O-R-D, Ford powered? Well, I was just a Ford man. All my people were <laughs> years ago, and I just liked the Fords, and, and it was different. Uh, he was always an underdog and on a forward, so I, I kind of like that. Try to make them run. I always had good luck with them. And just the forward man, I guess. Well, Gene, since you're a Ford guy, and I know you had to go through many different engines, I've heard the stories over the years. Talk to me, what engine from Ford was that best one? You liked working on it, you liked running with it, and it just seemed to produce the best power. Well, back when I started, I liked the high riser, 427 Ford high riser, which I still like. They, they really hard to beat. And then I started running Tone Ford. I run uh, an OV camera, which is a, I like that, but it, it was too expensive for me back then. I couldn't have really afford it. And the high riser, I, I just, just had good luck with the high riser. And it, it always ran good. Gene, the Willis looks better than it ever has. It's back to life after many years of, like me when I was a little boy, of it just being in the corner of the shop. So look, tell me, how do you feel about the gasser movement coming back alive in drag racing, and what was it like to get behind the wheel again? Well, I'm glad to see it coming back, and there's been a lot going on. I still like to run the Willis. It was good getting back in it. I wished I could go back now and do it, but my health just won't let me. If I could, I would. And I'm glad to see it going as good as it's going. A lot of, a lot of interest in it now. And it's something a lot of people can do, you know. And it'd just be good to get back. We left Starlight Gene pulled out. He's going up the road, Julie. 
she was in my lap and she said, Daddy, said the car ain't on the trailer, it's following us. You know what? Chugga, chugga, chugga. It's, on, it's it had, still a four speed. Yeah, if it had the switch on, it cranked up and passed us. <laughs> but uh, that was weird. It just ran off the side and it hurt anything. Nah, it just kept on, followed us right on up and took towards the trailer. <laughs> But that was weird. We went to Indian 1965 and we got up there, we couldn't pass inspections. We had to work on the car all day on the fender wheels. The fender wheels had to be about a half inch around the headers. We had to do all that kind of stuff like that to get where we passed inspections. It took us all day to do that. And then after that, I don't remember a whole lot. <laughs> we stayed in line all day. We stayed in line, waiting and waiting, about to get to a run and everything. Then he finally got to run, make a run and all. But uh, about when we was working on it, we got everything from uh, Hearst Doctor. They had everything you could imagine on that truck, and they let us use it. So it was pretty good. We, get, we made it. <laughs> We was upstate in South Carolina and we took both cars, just run what you bring. And uh, so Gene had the Willis and the funny car there. So we was all, everybody was doing all right. Gene outrun everybody and he come down and he had to run both cars. And so, but he wanted to know, somebody wanted to know, so who's gonna put in the Willis? And Skip was gonna drive it. And Skip said, no, let Melvin drive it. I didn't want to drive it. <laughs> and I said, so Gene said, you drive it. <clears throat> Had to find me a helmet. And Gene told me, he said, don't red light. So he was going to come back and run. Second, he was going to be the winner. I was going to be the winner. So I could come back with the Mustang. Come back with the Mustang because he was running fuel in the Mustang. This was second place. This for second place. So he said, don't red light. I said, okay. <laughs> I get in it. I take off. Of the, he said, wait for that green light. When the green light, I took off. But I didn't get over 40 mile an hour. Gene <laughs> run up beside me and just had to stop almost. <laughs> but I, I kept, won the race. I kept wanting him to come on. He just sitting up there riding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had it. It was. I'd I go past and let off. Go past and let off. And he just sent him a guiding. <laughs> yeah, that's all I done. But I drove the Willis. But he won the race. He won. I run the race. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. And I got second place. And then he got second place. And then we had. And then we had to fight for it. <laughs> oh, Tarzan! I never will forget. He said, "I'll go get your money." He said, I'll throw them out of the tower. <laughs> I'm going, Tarzan, you can't do that. They'll lock us all up. <laughs> uh, we were coming back from the Superstock Nationals in New York, Pennsylvania, on the interstate, and the interstate was really new. It wasn't no stations open. We'd run low on gas, and we'd give out the gas. So I put it on the side of the road. It wasn't really any traffic either. So, it was about 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, what are going to do, Melvin? I'll take the can and go down to the, the station that's having that gas, food, and logic, lodging next exit. So Melvin took off. Well, I went to sleep. When I woke up, Melvin wasn't, wasn't on Melvin, so I said, well, I'll just put some alky in, the, in this ranchero and see if I can find him. Yeah. So I put, I put a couple of gallons of not, uh, alcohol in it, went down to the exit, and there wasn't nothing there at that exit. So I got back on the front of this road and went back and come into Alexander, Virginia, and filled up with gas. I said, the only one thing I'm going to do is go back to where I think I was at when we, when we ran out of gas. So I, I, I was going back down the interstate, and I pull over, and here come Melvin. Uh, here come a highway patrolman come, coming across a meeting. Had Melvin with him. 
<laughs> oh Lord! Won't know where I'd be in or, or, or what I was doing, but I, I, done, I done fill up the gas then. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a that was a trip. And Gene Dummy said, "Now, don't mash down on it too hard, cause it's spark spark knocked real bad." No, I couldn't run it over twenty miles an hour. Yeah, but we made it on. Yeah. Got home. Well, after I got gas in it, it straightened out. Yeah, we got gas in it, it straightened out then. Poor old ranchero. And then coming on home, the rear end went out. Yeah, the rear end. The ring out. gear. The ring gear the come out of it. And it sounded like a siren. It sounded like a people. <coughs> Excuse me. People would actually pull over on the side of the road when we come by. <laughs> yeah. We didn't think we'd make it, but we made it all the way home on it. All the way. We done that by. We done went through about two or three rear ends. Yeah. Couple bumped the rear ends. Well, two yeah. spider gears that tear up spider gears in them. Yeah. But finally, I put a full pinion carrier in it and a, a solid spacer on the pinion to stop my rear end problem. Yeah. <laughs> Had her going through about four or five. Yeah. We was in. Uh, Miami. About this about three o'clock in the morning when I when I pull off the interstate, the spider gear show up. Yeah. And as long as I could I could get it I could shake it, if I could ever get the catch, it would keep pulling unless I'd let off the gas or it had to stop. So I I kept it pulling till we got to a traffic light and it had, had to, to stop. And we're going to the service station a couple of well, it was about a mile down the road. That's where we're going to start to spend the rest of the night. And these these two guys come by in the Volkswagen bug that knew us and yeah. knew where we were going. You you knew all about it. They, they, so they said, "We'll we'll pull you to, we'll pull you to that station." And I said, "I know a Volkswagen bug could pull this car and trailer." But they hooked it up. <laughs> and got it going and, and they pulled us to that station and we spent the rest of the night at that station. <laughs> Next morning though got run the run the station. He run a record service too. He went and got us a, a rear end of the junkyard and we put it in. Yeah. Got back home. After <laughs> the race, we raced. We raced. Yeah. But that was funny. I'd I'd give anything had a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> that dead blank bug, that Volkswagen bug pulling the ranchero and the race car and the back end loaded down with slicks and the engine sitting in it. I'm going, Gene said, I don't think this thing will pull. <laughs> we went down to Miami. We ran down there a lot of times. And it was a funny car to race. Me. It came down between me and Houston Platt for first place. And I broke. Houston won, so we come back and run for second place. Yeah. And so naturally, I couldn't, I couldn't crank because it was broke. But we did that to, we did that to get runner-up money. Yeah. We took and took Gene up there and got him up there, and I was out there squirting gas in the thing and that sucker wouldn't crank it would have cranked if, if it cranked up I fell over dead right there. I'll take that back. That was for first place. That was for first place. First place. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we was on the line to, to run Houston. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. For first place, yeah. And he got runner up. We ran in Miami a good bit good bit. Yeah, run Miami a bunch. What was the craziest place that y'all ran at? Craziest? Mm -hmm. All of them was crazy. You know, that, that nice one. Oh yeah. That's what, 40. What was the name of that track? Blue, Re no. This was, this was a long time ago. We, it was a track in Niceville, and it didn't have no stopping room. The only good thing, it rained the race out that night, and we didn't get to run it, and I was 
was really glad. Yeah. Oh yeah. We went to the Grand Old Opera instead. Yep. <laughs> uh, it was what was the name of that track? Because you I remember you said I thought about it the other week. Yeah. He said, I sure am glad I didn't run last night. He said, he just went out there and they just dropped off. <laughs> well, it started out just, you know, I guess the super stocks or whatever, and it just kept getting wilder and wilder. And people started injecting and, and moving the wheels moving up. Moving the wheels up, running fuel, just whatever you could do to try to win. And there wasn't no rules. That's they call it run what you brung and you had to bring a lot <laughs> if you wanted to win. And so it just involved a man and then it started getting funny car, you know, and it started getting some, some more rules and all with it. But to start with it was just just whatever you could do. It's uh the funny car, it was basically just a frame, tube chassis, and quarter panels, and fiberglass, and that's it. You well, you went as light as you could. Yeah. yeah. When it first started out, I ran the Willis. I put fuel in the Willis and run it with the funny cars. Yeah. But, and, uh, it, and, uh Atlanta Speed Shop Drake, where they, where they had $10,000 meat, what they call it, Atlanta's 10000 I ran the Willis over in 66 with, with the funny cars, and I qualified an eighth out of 20 cars with it. Yeah. And then in 67, went back with, with the Mustang, and I won it. Yeah. That's where he done the giant wheel stand. With the wheels. So describe the Mustang for me. Describe what it was like, what it looked like, why you did what you did with it. Well, it was just a tube of three tubing, a Don Long front front axle and transverse spring, and nine inch rear in it. And I started out with two quarter panels order from Ford and fiberglass. Fenders and the front end, which which I had to make, I had to put in, put the fiberglass front end together because it and make a one piece out of it. They didn't have one piece at that time. Yep. And made it the front end to flip up. And that was about it on it. There wasn't there wasn't a whole lot to it. It weighed about eight hundred pounds. But you take, who, when they start making you run top every once in a while? York, Pennsylvania. York, yeah. That's when I first put the top on it, York, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Superstar Nationals. Yeah. And it really was a flip top. They was calling them flip tops and it, the back the top raised up forward. Yeah. <laughs> That's he had the original flip top. It probably wasn't the safest thing in the world. <laughs> no, probably wasn't. Anything back in them days wasn't safe, unless you had plenty of money. <laughs> All right, Gene, a lot of folks know that you've had a right-hand man with you for a very long time, especially back in the days when you were in your heyday of drag racing. Melvin Kraft. So how did y'all actually meet, get together, and uh, go and do all this rambling around in the drag racing world? <laughs> Tell him, well, uh, I had a 49 Ford and it hang up between gears and I was talking to Gene's mom. I was working in the mill and uh, she said, my son's got a shop. said, he might can help you. So Told me where it was at. I come over here and he said the best way to do it is put a floor shift in. So he was selling Hurst floor shifts, he had a speed shop. 
Well, he put the shifter in and everything. So then I started coming over. I'd work in the third shift, uh, third shift, and I'd come over and hang around. And then I got tinkering with motors, and he got in, started building. He was wheeling the wheelies, and one thing led to another. And first thing I know, I'm going to every weekend. I'm gone. So that's. that's Man, was he was always, always ready to go. Always. I'd I told him I was going somewhere, he was ready. Yep. <laughs> Didn't matter when or where, he he was yeah. always there. I was always here. <laughs> uh, that's been long. We got a lot of miles under us. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. I remember, <laughs> I remember Ed setting his car on fire and him running around hunting the fire steamers. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so when you're at the track, you know, whether it's one person, two, or you got a crew of 12, everybody's got a role, everybody's got responsibility. So back in the day, what is it that you two were responsible for at the track? What were the roles? Yeah. I'd take, make sure he had fuel in the car. I'd mix, if he's running the funny car, I'd mix the fuel. Uh, pack the parachute and help him get to the line and get it cranked and Gene done the rest. Pull me back. No. I pulled him back. Yeah. And the <clears throat> wheelers, they want a whole lot to do was that just gas it up. And gas it up and check the tire pressure and yeah. stuff like that. I might change. He'll, he'll tell me to change the plugs. I'll change the plugs. Change the jets. Change the jet. We just, we done it just by either one of us do something. So, yes, but. Try yeah. to make everything right. Which yep. Is hard to do. <laughs> yep. Mm, it's just great time. Guys, look, you have obviously got a history in drag racing, but the history has come back to life here in the modern day, and y'all have been able, as a dynamic duo, once again back out to the track with this revived the Moonlighter Willis. So to talk to me, what has it been like being back at the track with each other, Gene back driving and Melvin back doing some wrenching and crew chiefing? What's that been like? Been great. Had yeah, a it's good been time. real good. Been real good. Enjoyed it. Worked a lot of nights to get it back together. A lot of days. When we, we first it brought it out, it was a it was a big day. A lot of people, a lot Ooh, of friends, yeah. people I didn't know. Some I didn't remember, but <laughs> yeah, they all seemed to remember a whole lot. It was a good it was a good time. Oh yeah, felt good after working on the start line again and everything. So it was great. It'd be good to go back, but it's hard to do. Oh yeah, maybe one more time. <laughs> now I think it's car shows. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's all right too. <laughs> oh. Guys, look. You were there back in the day, pioneering days of drag racing, as it were. But we have many, many decades from that time when this Willis was the fastest thing on the strip. So talk to me. What are your thoughts on modern day drag racing? I don't like it. <laughs> well, I think the old, the old racing was better, I think. Uh, yeah. I think, actually, I guess you can say if things got too fast. Too quick. Too much money involved. Put the poor man out. Yeah, uh, poor, poor people can't do it. It's hard to do. Yeah, he, Unless you got a big sponsor, it's, you can't do it. Can't. Yeah. Ain't no way you can compete with people that's got money and can travel and do all the races. And uh, when we was running, uh, we had. 58 Ford Ranch Arrow and the Willis on a trailer. Everything you had to work with was in the back of that Ranch Arrow. If we were gonna spend the night or something, 
we either slept in the ranchero or somebody was nice enough to let us spend the night at their house. And But now you go to the race, all you see is motor coaches and uh, <laughs> enclosed trailers. The first first time we went back, I couldn't believe all the trailers, all them enclosed trailers. We didn't know what that was back then. No. Uh -uh. A tow bar now, we knew what a tow bar was. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not, right. Not all these trailers and these motor homes and all, it was something else. Why, we don't even still don't even own it. Ice kids. You get on the track, you know, walk out on the track, and you pull your shoes off, you know. Back years ago, we could skate on the track. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shoot, man. Uh, it's a lot different. It's a lot different. It's, uh, I mean, I ain't knocking the people that's got the money and everything, but they wouldn't know how to survive when we was going. <laughs> as far as cooking out and all that stuff, we didn't cook out. If you got a hot dog at the Dead Blame concession stand or a cold sandwich going down, you, you're lucky. You're lucky. <laughs> or, uh, pack of square crackers and a Pepsi or something or a Coke or anything to drink. Most of we drank water, but back then they didn't have bottled water back then. Uh -uh. First time I was, matter of fact, we was in Miami and I went and down there to Houston and uh, he gave me, uh, I got two soft drinks from him and, uh, and we had a pack of crackers in there and we eat that at the track. <laughs> Couldn't afford it. I mean, man, you, know, you couldn't have you, today. God, you go, they food everywhere. But gas was a lot different then too. Yeah, gas was a lot different. Eighteen cents a gallon. Eighteen cents a gallon, you know. And there wasn't no such thing as uh, racing gas back then. We we run Sunoco's when we could get it. If we didn't, the, the other shell. That's about all we ever ran. Yeah. In the Willis. In the Willis, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, the racers today has got it made. I mean. If they got money. They got <laughs> money. So it's nice. Drag racing fan, I hope you enjoyed that peek into Gene's speed shop. The conversation with Gene and Melvin themselves as pioneers of the early days of drag racing. For Gene's efforts and accomplishments, he's going to be inducted into the North Carolina Drag Racing Hall of Fame, a member of the 2021 class. Congratulations, Gene, and I'm very thankful for my dad, who is Melvin Craft, Gene's crew chief. And this was a project that I've been wanting to do ever since I started Monday Morning Racer. I wanted to get these guys on camera and to be able to share some of their stories. Yes, the memories are fading, but I wanted to capture what I could from even my own childhood. And for those of you that love drag racing of the early days with two characters such as Gene Cromer, and Melvin Craft. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Shop Tours by yours truly, the Monday Morning Racer. Hit the like button for me, subscribe to the channel, and tell someone about Monday Morning Racer. Until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.